Have you ever wondered what the true size of the Milky Way is? To get close to that answer, it helps to start with what's most familiar, the distances within our cosmic backyard, the solar system. When we understand what separates Earth from its nearest neighbors, we gain the scale to grasp what comes next. And what comes next makes everything inside our system feel almost insignificant. The first milestone is both close and revealing. The moon. It's about 384,400 kilometers from Earth. For us, that's a vast distance. In cosmic terms, it's just a step. If a commercial airplane could fly continuously at 1,000 kilometers per hour, that air bridge to our satellite would take roughly 16 days. Light, racing through the vacuum at speeds that defy intuition, covers that path in about 1.28 seconds. That means a round-trip message between Earth and the Moon has a delay of approximately 2.5 seconds. Little for astronomy, enough to throw off the rhythm of a conversation. That small delay becomes a problem when the conversation involves Mars. At the best alignment, the red planet sits around 56 million kilometers away. In the airplane metaphor at 1,000 kilometers per hour, it would be about 6.2 years of travel before touchdown. For light, that leap takes roughly three minutes. In communication terms, even in the favorable scenario, you speak now and only hear the reply about six minutes later. On missions where decisions must be precise, that time lag isn't just inconvenient, it can be critical. Speaking of measurements, one point often causes confusion, the famous astronomical unit. In the previous video, we mentioned the distance between the Sun and Earth, around 150 million kilometers, and called that one astronomical unit. Why does that number dance? Because one astronomical unit isn't a fixed value on any given day of the year. It's the average Earth-Sun distance. Earth's orbit isn't a perfect circle. It's an ellipse. That's why there are moments of greater approach and greater separation. At perihelion, Earth comes to about 147.1 million kilometers from the Sun, an event that usually happens about two weeks after the December solstice. At aphelion, it recedes to roughly 152.1 million kilometers, about two weeks after the June solstice. Many people are surprised to learn that in the Northern Hemisphere, the period of greatest distance from the Sun coincides with summer, the reason for the seasons isn't distance, but Earth's axial tilt. With or without perihelion, sunlight takes about 8 minutes and 20 seconds to cross the gap between the Sun and us. Pushing our view farther, we reach Neptune, the most distant planet from the Sun. The average of its orbit is around 4.5 billion kilometers, or about 30 astronomical units. At that distance, sunlight takes roughly four hours to reach the blue planet. When Earth and Neptune are on the same side of the sun, in the most favorable configuration, the distance between them drops to something like 4.3 billion kilometers. Returning to our hypothetical airplane at 1,000 kilometers per hour, the crossing to Neptune would require a commitment of approximately 490 years. Half a millennium to cover only a fraction of the solar system gives a good sense of scale. Beyond Neptune's orbit, the map fills with small icy worlds. Among them is Pluto, which orbits at around 39 astronomical units, an icon of the Kuiper Belt. Even so, neither Pluto nor that belt defines the end of the Sun's territory. The real border with interstellar space is the heliopause, a kind of boundary where the solar wind ever weaker, yields to plasma and particles that don't belong to our star. That's where the sun's influence, measured by its charged particles, truly ends. Crossing the heliopause means entering another scale. The closest star to the sun, Proxima Centauri, is about 40 trillion kilometers away. In the language of solar system thinkers, that's the equivalent of almost 270,000 astronomical units. Suddenly, any intrasolar distance seems modest, and the average gap between stars and the Milky Way drives the point home. 
something on the order of 316 astronomical units separates, on average, one star from another. It's a vacuum, vast enough to turn the word neighbor into poetic license. To give texture to these numbers, think of Betelgeuse, a red supergiant so large that its diameter would exceed the orbits of Mars and even Jupiter if we placed it where the Sun is. We're talking about something on the order of a billion kilometers across, approximately 700 times the size of our Sun. And yet, despite being huge and bright in the night sky, Betelgeuse is about 650 light years away from us. How do we compare that with everyday life? A moderately active person takes around 7,500 steps per day, which comes to about 6 kilometers walked daily. For most of human history, average life expectancy barely exceeded 24 years. That totals close to 52,560 kilometers over a lifetime. If we multiply that distance by all the human beings who have ever been born, an estimate around 117 billion, we arrive at more than 6 quadrillion kilometers walked collectively. Even in this mental game, where all humanity passes a baton through the ages, covering the equivalent of a single lifetime per person, we'd only manage to reach something like the distance to Betelgeuse. And note the detail. That monumental feat would still equal less than 1% of our galaxy's diameter. In the same exercise, going from the Sun to Betelgeuse, at human walking pace, would take something like 2.8 trillion years. Can you feel how these numbers slip past our intuition? The Milky Way, our home, measures about 100,000 light years across. Saying the number is simple, grasping what it means is not. The mind tries to hold the scale and it slips away. How do we make it tangible? One strategy is to shrink the galaxy down to a reference we know well, Earth's size. If we compress the Milky Way, which spans approximately 100,000 light years, down to the diameter of our planet, about 12,742 kilometers, we're reducing the galaxy by a factor of roughly 74 trillion. In this miniature model, the Sun, which is about 1.392 million kilometers in diameter, becomes a speck thinner than a human hair around 18 micrometers, more precisely 18.7 micrometers. And where would Proxima Centauri be on this globe galaxy? Just about 540 meters from our tiny sun, a little over half a kilometer. Betelgeuse, the red giant so easy to find in the sky, would end up a bit more than 80 kilometers away on this reduced map, something around 82 kilometers. These comparisons do more than entertain. They show how our daily experience doesn't prepare our senses for the stage on which the cosmos unfolds. Light needs 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way from end to end. When photons that reach us today began their journey in other regions of the galaxy, our ancestors still lived by hunting and gathering, with no idea of the silent spectacle playing out above their heads. And colossal as it is, the Milky Way is just one among an estimated two trillion galaxies. Each of them carries its own inventory of stars, planets, clouds, black holes, perhaps subsurface oceans, who knows, exotic biomes. Together, they turn the universe into an almost inexhaustible collection of possible stories. Let's return for a moment to the solar system to fix the scale before widening it again. Earth and Moon seem close until we remember that a video call between two people separated by 384,000 kilometers would require patience with the back and forth signal. Mars seems relatively within reach until we recall that, in the best case, the echo of an instruction sent from here comes back with a six-minute delay. Neptune feels remote until we remember that the Sun rises there four hours after it rises here. Pluto, though emblematic, doesn't even mark the end of the Sun's domain. The heliopause does, and beyond it, the measurements change units, mindset, and, in a sense, imagination. In the interstellar regime, light years and astronomical units multiply as easily as steps on a sidewalk. Proxima Centauri, the closest neighbor, sits hundreds of thousands of AU away. 
The average separation between stars in our galaxy exceeds 300,000 astronomical units. Betelgeuse, with its gigantism, fits comfortably within astrophysical numbers, yet remains unattainable in terms of everyday human experience. And when we dare to take the entire Milky Way and place it in the palm of our hand, shrinking it to Earth's diameter, we discover our sun becomes an invisible grain, while the nearby stars fit within a radius of a few blocks, and notable supergiants fall at distances comparable to a car trip between cities. What do we do with that realization? It changes how we look at the sky and at ourselves. It helps explain why real-time communication is unfeasible with spacecraft on Mars, why interplanetary operations require autonomy, why the units of measure we use day to day don't work when the subject is the galaxy's neighborhood. And above all, it shows that no matter how vast the space between Earth and any world in the solar system may seem, our bubble is still tiny compared to the interstellar ocean. When we say the Milky Way is 100,000 light years across, we're compressing enormous complexity into an elegant number. Behind it are spiral arms, stellar populations, star-forming regions, and dust lanes. A halo that envelops the disk, a supermassive black hole at the center, and billions of orbits dancing on timescales that crush calendars. Even so, the galaxy is just a point in a cosmos that may contain two trillion similar points, each with its own magnitudes and paradoxes. In the end, the question about the size of the Milky Way opens the way to something bigger, the realization that our references must be reinvented when we look outward. The Moon teaches us to deal with seconds, Mars with minutes, Neptune with hours, interstellar space with light years and hundreds of thousands of astronomical units, the galaxy with tens of thousands of light years, the universe with trillions of galaxies. From there, any map is a metaphor, and perhaps it's precisely that impossibility of taking it all in with the mind that makes the cosmos so fascinating. Every number that feels exaggerated is an invitation to keep asking, comparing, exploring, because every time we think we've understood the scale, we find there's still plenty of room to grow and to be surprised. Leave your like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.